Hello, friends. Welcome to the Career Guru Podcast. I am your host, Steve Yanofsky. What a glorious day it is to start your path on a new career. Doors are opening here at the Boston Career Institute even as we speak. And I'm here holding the key for you. So tune in, stay sharp, and enjoy yourself. This is going to be great. Hashtag Let's Career Up. Hello, good day, everybody. Welcome to the fourth installment of the Career Guru Podcast. I am your all-knowing, all-sensing, all-loving career guru. But you can call me Steve. Today, it is my pleasure and the privilege to introduce to you one of my first graduates of the dental assistant program here at the Boston Career Institute, uh, my esteemed graduate, Dorada Shosho. Um, she is one of the first people to graduate from the dental assisting program about 18 years ago. Um, Dorada came to United States about 20 years ago from Albania, and she was a medical doctor over there. Um, when she came to United States, she needed to figure out what to do as far as her professional growth and career is concerned. And she found her way to the Boston Career Institute. And lucky for me, and I guess for her at the same time, she came to talk to me directly. Um, I listened to her. And uh, even though she was a medical doctor, a potentially medical assisting was a more logical choice. But having evaluated her goals and needs, I felt at the time that dentistry would be a better field to get into. Dentistry about that time started to develop a feel of glamour built in around dentistry. Before, dentistry was a relatively um, simplistic profession where people would go to see the dentist when they were in pain. Dentistry wasn't um, looked upon favorably by most people. A lot of people have a fear of dentistry. A lot of people really didn't have too much uh, great experiences with dentistry because it's always associated with pain. But all of a sudden, about 20 years back, maybe a little bit before that, dentistry started to make an interesting turn into health and beauty. So the beauty aspect of dentistry it became known today as smile makeovers with implants and, and everything else that's involved today in dentistry. Basically, giving people a new lease on life. Very few people understand how much is tied into the person's mouth. Everything you that happens to your body begins in the mouth. When you begin to ingest food and you know you, you chew it, and if you don't have the teeth, what are you going to do about it? What if you're looking for a new job? What if you're looking for a, an amazing career and you can't open your mouth to smile because your teeth are not in great shape? People are embarrassed of their teeth. Or there's a... Uh, problem of halitosis, of bad breath. So all of a sudden, all these things came into prominence in, in dentistry. And that's what I saw that a person like uh, Dorado could excel in. So after a little bit of convincing, uh, she made the leap of faith and uh, joined the dental assisting program. And uh, today she has reached an amazing accomplishment in that field. And she is one of the esteemed people that work um, at the Boston University's Goldman School of uh, Dentistry. Did I say all that correctly, Dorada? Is yeah. it the Goldman School of Dentistry? Dental medicine. Yes, dental medicine. Very good. And so she is working there. And Dorada, please tell us uh, what you do over there and how you got to do it. And uh, tell us a little bit about your career growth, and then we'll sort of get in to some of the questions uh, that I have prepared for you. Uh, I work at dental... Goldman Henry Goldman School of Dental Medicine has been 17 years now and I my title is the radiology technician I primary job is to take the CBCT comb beam CT scan it's uh, part of the Radiology that is focused on head and neck started for ENT and then was applied in dentistry and now is the fashion of everywhere. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So then, for for uh, most 
for most people, I just want to make sure that people are aware that we're talking about something called a CAT scan. It has nothing to do with cats. It, uh, no. It's a CT scanner, which stands for a computerized tomography, and it gives these three-dimensional images, if you will, of the head and neck. And you use the term ENT, which is uh, ear, nose, and throat doctor, also known as otorhinolaryngologists. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, please but go on, Dorada. When you say CAT scan, it's mostly for medical CAT scan. That's what right. What we do in dentistry is cone beam CT scan. It's a little bit different and is usually people sit. And then uh, this is my uh, primary part of the job. On top of that, I, um, in Boston University, we are into digital dentistry. Mm -hmm. which is uh, the most the most recent development on dentistry and um so it's it's a lot to talk about mm -hmm. and well give us a little taste of what that is you know it's based is on implant dentistry so now people uh, if they are missing a tooth they put an implant to to have the to put the crown, and this way uh, to have a beautiful smile. Mm -hmm. And now uh, it was done differently before, but now it's more like guided implant placement. Mm -hmm. Like you you have the models and you have a surgical guide that helps you with the placement of the implant. So everything goes by the plan, and you have the the perfect restoration to reach that purpose we have to uh, there are many steps and one of those is uh, taking a cbct and then there are different ways of doing this mm -hmm. is one part and then another thing is that recently we start applying robotic surgeries which is very nice and it's it's beautiful and so this is another part of that i i help the the dentist scanning the patients with the special devices for the robotic surgeries and then uploading data into the drives for the robotic arms to, to continue working. So there Amazing. are many parts of the dentistry that uh, is, when I started years ago and um, in 2003, Steve, I met you and mm -hmm. started my uh, dental, ass dental assisting program. And I started to work in dentistry, and since that time until now, amazing progress has been made in dentistry. So, and I started taking CT scans around 2007 at Boston University Dental School. It was the time that we had the first scanner, mm -hmm. and uh, since that time until now, we have seen many, many, many developments. So, dentistry is a big field with amazing developments. I. So every, every six months, every year, you see something new happening. That's amazing. So would you say that you made the right choice for yourself? I would say yes. So what do you think? Um, let me ask you a question also. So you started working at Boston University after you had a, uh, a, a few positions with private physicians and which particular um, some of the doctors that you worked with, your path led you to Boston University. Now, Boston University allowed you certain opportunities for you to advance your education, and you also were able to uh, advance education for one of your kids, if I remember correctly. Yeah, my so, daughter. Right. So fill us in about that. Tell us, tell us how working for a, an institution like Boston University or even Harvard, because they have similar programs and Tufts, we're in Boston, so we are, we're like in, in these uh, amazing places of higher education and professional development, not to mention, of course, the Boston Career Institute, which is the, yeah, the, exactly. the, the, <laughs> the Harvard of, of, uh, of career education. Uh, hopefully, Harvard is not going to sue me for this, but uh, I'm just saying in general. Um, so we're here and all these opportunities. So you got this job in BU and what kind of benefits helped you and your family by having this job? I just want to show that there's a professional growth for people 
in this field while working for these large organizations and the, and the benefits that they offer? Um, I believe every high education school can offer those benefits, but on my personal experience, first, uh, my daughter had um, was accepted at Boston University undergrad program and BU offers the free tuition. So covers mm -hmm. 90% of tuition for the kids of, or also the spouses of the employees. So it, this was one of the best benefits from working at Boston University. Mm -hmm. Then uh, after I started to work on, uh, on taking the CBCT, I was accepted in a master program for bioimaging. When mm -hmm. I started. Master's degree, master's degree. Yeah, uh, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when I started, it was one year program and now they developed in two, year pro two years program. And also Boston University covered my tuition. And if you have a spouse that goes, is accepted at BU, they cover 90% of tuition for your family. So this is one of excellent benefits that you can have when you work in the, those institutions. And that is absolutely amazing, folks. I just want to quantify that for you in dollars and cents. What does that mean to have tuition paid for uh, uh, or most of the tuition paid for by the institution you work for? I mean, uh, I can expect the, yeah. from our listeners, a lot of people will be flooding the human resources offices trying to apply to Tufts, BU, UMass and all these places. Uh, you know, to see if they can get some free tuition. But I just want you to understand what that actually means. As a person who went to college himself and as a person who is now paying for his kids to go to college, um, I am spending to the tune of $70,000 a year uh, per child for education. That is a lot of money. And if you can imagine an entire undergraduate degree, we're talking about a quarter of a million dollars in dollars and cents. So there are tremendous benefits for working for some of these organizations. Every high level organization like that has tuition reimbursement uh, and a lot of benefits for people. So if you're building your own career or careers of your loved ones, and as Dorada pointed out, it's not just kids, it's also spouses. So there's many, many, many things you can do. You just have to have a vision of where you're going. And so with Dorada, she ended up in medical imaging, was able to seize the moment and say, hey, this is great stuff. And of course, people at the uh, at the Goldman School of uh, Dental Medicine weren't uh, foolish either. They saw a person of quality and they said, you know, this is the person for us. She is uh, she is bright. She's hardworking with a solid work ethic. Thank she's you, a licensed thank dental you. assistant. Why not invest time and energy into that person? And they, I, I, I know they made a wise decision. <laughs> You know, it's been almost 20 years and, and our first conversation is still fresh in my mind. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I've had the privilege of meeting your husband, too, uh, at the time, because I think it was a package deal. I had to convince not just you, but also your husband, <laughs> uh, you know, that, that this was <laughs> the right thing to do. Uh, you know, it's a family decision. You know, my wife and I will also talk about stuff. Of course, it's a it's a, it's a great thing, um, you know, but but it was great. I, I am so happy that you made that decision way back then. And uh, uh, every so often I run into people that, you know, and people that know me and us, you know, who knew that uh, the person I go to to cut my hair happens to be your uh, uh, relation. Uh, <laughs> Right. So sister-in-law. So, you know, it's a small world and, you know, God only knows when you're going to run into people who know you and you have to fill your day with good deeds, hopefully, to accommodate others. But, uh, you know, it, it always comes back to you. So I'm, I'm so happy to have this uh, conversation with you right now. Let's uh, let's talk a little bit more. You also do research over in BU, correct? I saw that you had some publications. Uh, tell us tell us what does it mean to have your name on a scientific publication? What oh, does that mean? Uh, it's very rewarding and uh, satisfies you extremely because I help a lot of researchers in dentistry doing not only from United from United States from Japan as well that they come here with fellowships and do their research and it's uh, it's very satisfying. 
And that is fantastic. I have a couple of publications, so. So these things, these things are published in scientific journals. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in in dentistry, and people are actually able to read the stuff, and then ask you questions if necessary because you're a contributing member to that scientific study. Yeah, and uh, also I ha I help a lot with the um, research for uh, residents that are doing their masters. And help them with this is another part of my job uh, selecting. Case. So once we have the IRB protocol ready, and then I select the cases, I uh, anonymize all cases, and then uh, according to HIPAA, and keep all the master list and the keys for the data, and then help them with um, sometimes analysis. Well, that's amazing. Uh, you know, I, I don't necessarily uh, uh, mean to say that all people who come here to BCI, to Boston Career Institute, studying dental assisting, will go on to achieve such heights. Let's not forget that uh, Dorada was a medical doctor and she had scientific and educational background to achieve uh, some of the things that we're talking about today. But no one is st uh, stopping anyone else from completing their bachelor's degree, uh, and uh, and moving on to bigger and better things. There's so it's a it's a big and beautiful world out there uh, in in uh, dentistry today. Uh, there's a lot of dentists and certainly not enough dental assistants exactly. uh, out there. A a good dental assistant is very very hard to come by, very difficult to hire, but the salaries have also increased. Um, you know, I, I don't know what you hear, Dorada, but the, on my end, uh, the uh, people without the educational credentials like you and people without any background, um, but people who do complete their studies here in BCI and then are eligible to get a Massachusetts state license, uh, they walk out of here and they're earning uh, it between $25 and $30 an hour to start. And that's not the this is not outliers. This is a, a regular salary. And for people who are trying to do the calculations right now, $25 an hour is about $52,000 a year, while $30 an hour is over 60, and that doesn't include overtime. Yeah. So this is a realistic wage, and all of that now comes with benefits. Benefits. There have been a lot of changes in, uh, uh, in the employment, uh, in, even in private offices, or in large companies, we have all sorts of companies in the area. We have Gentle Dental, we have Aspen Dental, we have all sorts of uh, uh, dental practice. And I will also, at some point in time, uh, if if I can secure one of my other former graduates who has uh, become a chief operations officer for one of these, you know, uh, dental management companies that run multiple practices, and that's another amazing story, which I hope uh, even you will be able to listen to and and see how she went. So even without further education, a career growth path, uh, path is absolutely possible. So, you know, tell us a little bit about what happened about the, you know, all those 18, 19 years ago. I don't, I don't even want to think about how long ago that was. You. 19 years ago. Yeah. Uh, I didn't, I didn't have too much gray uh, yet, but uh, uh, in any case, Tell us how you got started and whether you had these apprehensions or were you excited to start the job. Tell us how it worked out for you right after at the end of school, because dentistry was a new field for you. Yeah, it was a new field of me, but for me, but also I had knowledge from medical school. And uh, so I remember a couple of advices that we got from you, Steve, like how to go to an interview. So back then I too, wow. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So and I remember that you said one time, listen, when someone calls home, let the voicemail. So don't let the, the old lady <laughs> who answer because she doesn't speak English. And <laughs> yeah. So a couple that of, is true. Yeah, that's true. So and another advice like you told, if you live in dental office, please live as nicely as possible because dentistry is a very neat tight field so if you leave bad impression in one office for sure you are not going to get employed any other place so i remember a few advices 
Then um, you recommended me to a dentist that I remember very fondly, Dr. Siegel. She was a prosthodontist in Harvard. I started to work for her three days and then two days for another prosthodontist that is a professor at BU, Dr. Jacobson. A couple of years and then in 2005, Dr. Siegel merged her practice with another dental office and transferred in Sudbury. And I started to work at Boston University Dental School. So first I was working on the implantology department in the surgery room. And then after the BU purchased the first scanner, I started to work on the radiology, so taking CBCT. Mm -hmm. it, around that time, two years later or something like this, I, st I started my program in bioimaging and I was... It was a part time because I was working full time, and then uh, uh, so having also the master in bioimaging, I started to be more involved with research, and in a while I also started to teach the pre-doc students, the dental students, with the CBCT, and I'm still doing so. Every week, uh, the students that are in the radiology rotation come and I show them, explain them a couple of things about the CBCT, how they work, the requirements and so on. And then I, uh, so as the progress of the program by Boston University uh, developed, I uh, also my professional growth developed because uh, and I like to learn new things that I like to help everyone. And uh, Boston University gave me a lot of opportunities. And I, I'm i very, very happy. And I thank you first for the dental assisting program. And then every every step I, I had that I'm in this point of my professional life. Well, that is amazing. I, I, I am so, so happy that we had this opportunity to talk about uh, you in particular and a little bit about dentistry um, and about the program. Program is not difficult. Program is mostly hands-on nowadays. Uh, you learn to do hands-on skills enough to get you started in the field of general dentistry uh, for most people graduating today. But the most important thing is being able to obtain a professional license. When you first started out, uh, there was no licensure in Massachusetts. No, no, you no. just went. You just went with our certificate. But today, you know, uh, getting that professional license is just a perfect thing because that license gives you actual license. I, I'm not even sure how else to put it. You have a piece of paper that validates who you are yeah. and, and it's validated by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Um, it doesn't seem like a big deal, but it is a huge deal. And uh, with license comes professional responsibility and accountability. So, uh, but with a professional accountability and responsibility and expanded duties comes the higher wages. And that is that that is one of those great things. And just think what one person can accomplish in a dentist's office. It is the dental assistant at the end of the day who takes care of all of the other than the dentist who does the drilling or the implants or the braces or whatever. Most of the contact is with the assistant. Yeah. It is the assistant that prepares the room. It's the assistant that sterilizes uh, the instruments and, and the implants. But then again, implants may already come. Uh, pre-sterilized for uh, uh, for dentistry, not so in, in in medicine, but it's it's the dental assistant that does all that amazing work. And there are so many different specialties um, in, in in dentistry. You can do prosthodontics, uh, 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 what do you call them, uh, orthodontists, uh, oral surgeons, and uh, endodontists for uh, et cetera. And just so many wonderful things. People are no longer dreading going to the dentist. They are happy going in and even happier going out. So it's a it's a happy place. Yeah. Yes, yes, I know. It's the, the 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 smell of the dental medicine is still there. The sound of the drills is still there. But they got all sorts of stuff that can make you numb and comfortable, so you don't have to feel a thing. And then you walk out with that glorious smile. You know, I myself, uh, the career guru, is is preparing to uh, go to see the dentist for some Invisaligns to straighten out my 
my teeth so I will have a Hollywood smile. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, Vizalan yes. is very in trend now. Yes, yes, and uh, and uh, you know I'm I'm already uh, featuring two implants in my mouth. Thank you. Uh, you know, so so that was very exciting, and not without the involvement of a of a CBCT. So even the the even the small offices today actually uh, you know have it as a standard of care. You know, with a CBCT in the office, which is an exciting thing. I mean, folks, I, I gotta tell you, I saw the images, and I don't know whether you know anything else about me. I don't know if I told you. One of my experiences, uh, way way in the past, was uh, working with CAT scanners and MRIs and regular X-ray machines in in hospitals. Uh, I used to do that sort of thing, and so that was exciting way back then. And then all of a sudden, in dentistry, you go into an office and you have this amazing three-dimensional uh, scan of your mouth, which is just incredible, and it's all digital. Yeah. And then you can take this and and insert these implants, and then you know, in a short period of time, you have a brand new tooth, no pain, no fuss, no muss. I mean, that's just that's just terrific. So, um, well, anyway, Dorada, any other words of wisdom for the aspiring career gurus out there who may consider dentistry as as their growth uh, pattern? Actually, I would say that if you are thinking about in going into dentistry as dental assistant, one thing is the most important: work hard and don't hesitate to ask any to ask questions. And if you need help, learning requests for help. Dentistry gives you the opportunity to to grow in many directions. And also uh, in Massachusetts you can get the you can get licensed so you get better wages. But if you are willing to study you can go for the national board and be certified, which is even yes. better so you get even higher wages. But more you can go into the institution. You can also teach after certain so it gives you a lot of opportunities, and it's it's nice job. Ours are ve- perfect. So yes, there's a there's a lot of women dentists, by the way, who work mother's hours. Yeah, and if 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 you are a mother um, or a father, and you want to have what they call mother's hours, you can make a great fit with a dentist who wants the same thing. There's a lot of people who are juggling family, not just uh, not just people who are becoming dental assistants, but dentists themselves. I mean, they're people too. We forget that dentists are people and they have families and they need to pick up their kids from school and take them to school. So, you know, with that in mind, with that in mind, um, and that's you know, that's... Dental uh, assistant going for dentistry, becoming a dentist in a while. Even sure. So it's it's as long as you you have you have your goal and you you work hard you can reach anything. So and remember, sorry, Dorada, to interrupt. You know, next step from dental assistant, you can do dental hygiene. It's only two years education, and you know the the amount of money and the job satisfaction that you can have is just absolutely tremendous. And then why not become a dentist? Why not? Why not? You know, you can do it, but it, it just takes a first step. The first step is always the hardest. Lucky for us, we have a place like Boston Career Institute where you can actually take that step without a huge investment of money, huge investment of time with like-minded individuals. Get in, get out, get a job, and boom. Next thing you know, you're doing a CBCT in BU. Yeah, exactly. Like I was lucky <laughs> to find Steve. Well, I was lucky to find you, and I, I, I am so glad that we have kept up over the years. And I am very grateful that you consented to be on the on the podcast here with us and to help other people uh, become inspired and empowered to follow in your footsteps, not necessarily all the way that way, but there's the you just start walking, and then next thing you know, the road takes you somewhere, and you find that professional happiness and the financial rewards, which are so wonderful in the field of healthcare and especially dental medicine. So I I thank you very much. I look forward to future conversations with you. 
and uh, running into people that know you and related to you. Uh, it's it's great. You it's are great. Very, Thank you. Welcome. Thank you, Dorada. And I'll keep sending people to you, Steve. Thank you very much. For me, that's the biggest blessing and a uh, and a um, how should I say culmination, successful culmination of my work over the last twenty years is when folks like you still want to send their friends and acquaintances to see me here at the Boston Career Institute. I'm forever grateful and thank you so much you are uh, welcome, for Steve. for staying with me. Well, folks, that wraps up our fourth installment of the Boston of the Career Guru podcast, broadcasting from uh, spacious and modern studios at the Boston Career Institute. <laughs> um, I look forward to listening to your comments, reading your comments, and uh, helping you accomplish your success. Thank you very much. May God bless you and your family, your families, and I look forward to seeing you all. Let's career up. Or is it hashtag let's career up? That's it. <laughs> well, friends and aspiring career gurus, this was fun. Thank you for tuning in. I feel enlightened. I feel empowered. And I hope you do too. And I'm feeling grateful that we spent time together. For more information about Boston Career Institute, please visit our website at www dot boston career dot org boston career institute has three campuses in brookline malden and lowell massachusetts you can call our toll-free number at 888-383-6058 for questions comments and or other information about our podcast email bci podcast at boston career dot org the Career Guru Podcast is available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Anchor FM, iHeartRadio, TuneIn Radio, Podbay FM, and of course, YouTube, or wherever you stream your podcasts. I'm looking forward to seeing you all soon. All the best to you. My name is Steve Yanofsky. I am the Career Guru. May God bless you. Hashtag, let's career up. <laughs>